Hello, my name is Roy Cohen, and I'll be hosting this week's edition of the Community Forum Show. And what a show we have lined up for you. We're going to tell you where to go, when to go, and how to go if you're interested in the weekend trips and stuff. And to tell you uh, that kind of information uh, are the experts. I have Mary McGuire. She's the Director of Public and Legislative Affairs at the AAA. Welcome again, Mary. Thanks for having us, Roy. Oh, it's a pleasure. And we also have Mark Shieldrop. He's the Public Affairs Specialist. I mean, what? how much bigger can you get than these two people uh, to, <laughs> Much to, bigger. Talk about, to talk about places to go and things to do. But, but on top of all of that information, uh, we have a surprise for you. And I'm sure that most of you have heard about the Topsfield Fair. That's a, an annual fair that uh, uh, attracts thousands. And one of, the, one of the reasons why they go is to see the giant pumpkins. Am I right? You are absolutely okay. right. And who we have with us, <laughs> we have the mother of the, of the winner, and that's Mary McGuire. She's going to talk about uh, her son's great adventure in, in uh, growing this, this monstrosity and uh, what it took to do it. So, Mary, why don't you take it and we can show some sure. uh, exciting photos of it also. Yes, yeah, so my son, uh, Alex Noel, won the Topps Field Fair this year. He won the giant pumpkin way off at the Topps Field Fair. So this is really the New England way off. So there you see him, him in front of his pumpkin, which weighed 2,294 and a half pounds. And uh, he's uh, holding his award-winning sign, and that's his girlfriend, Elizabeth, with him. Um, so uh, this is really a labor of love for him. So you can see that plenty of media turned out uh, to photograph and videotape the, the event, the way-off event, and the pumpkin. And I don't know what it is about these giant pumpkins, but I think they hold a real fascination for people. And this is actually a great photograph because you can really get a sense of how big these things are. So uh, in a lot of communities, these giant pumpkins are actually hollowed out and floated down the river. They have pumpkin regattas. And so that's how big these are. They're like the size of a Volkswagen, you know, and you can really see that. So this is Pinky. His two giant pumpkins, both of which were over 2,000 pounds, were Pinky and Goldie. His girlfriend named them. So that is Pinky, and that's the Topps Field winner. Now, this is actually on display at Foxwoods. You can see the sign, Great Foxwoods Pumpkin, there. And it was very funny because Alex went to visit Pinky the other night with Elizabeth, and they couldn't get near Pinky because Pinky had 24 7 security around it. Really? And he had to make several phone calls to the officials at Foxwoods before he could get in there and visit his pumpkin that he spent so much time growing. But so here he is uh, winning Topps Field, and he did win $8,500, which was wonderful because he really put thousands of hours of hard work into growing both of these pumpkins. His second pumpkin came in second place at the Rhode Island Way Off. That was 2,035 pounds. And uh, there's Alex holding up his uh, winning sign with the weight on it, of course. So um, really a special night for us, for our family. And of course, everybody's wearing orange. And, um, you know, it's really uh, an incredible um, discipline that these pumpkin farmers have because they start with a seed. I call it a magic seed. In February, they start the seeds inside. And uh, then Alex puts his seed seedlings at that point in the ground in the April-May time frame after the danger of frost has passed. And he actually grew three giant pumpkins this year in a 3,000-foot greenhouse. It's got a special netting on it. Uh, that he drove all the way to Quebec uh, to procure. So this is a netting that keeps bad insects out that would prey on the pumpkins, mm -hmm. but it lets the sunshine and the rain in. So it's a very special greenhouse, and uh, he uh, has soil that's been tested uh, specially to make sure it's got all of the proper nutrients in it. And then whenever he waters, he's adding to that water uh, an interesting cocktail of um, things like boron that has a lot of minerals in it, seaweed, again, you know, protein rich, mineral rich, um, things like uh, fish emulsion, all sorts of um, fertilizers that will help enhance the growth of the pumpkin. And I think the most amazing thing is that 
the pumpkins also love rain, but also sun and heat. And sun and heat, the sun and heat of the summer really make the pumpkins grow quickly. And at the height of uh, Pinky's growth, Pinky was gaining 55 pounds a day. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and last year, Alex also grew um, several giant pumpkins. And, uh, and in fact, he told me that last year, his pumpkin, his big pumpkin was growing 62 pounds a day. So pretty incredible. I always tell him that he should put a webcam on the pumpkin so that sure. people can watch the growth in real time. But it really is amazing. And um, his pumpkin, his big pumpkin, broke the Connecticut state record. Um, and that's why Foxwoods was interested in displaying it, because they wanted the record-breaking pumpkin from Connecticut um, on display. And then his second pumpkin, Goldie, uh, they both had a nickname. Um, he sold to the Pittsburgh Zoo, and that is on display at um, Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, and that's the pumpkin that almost won the Rhode Island Way Off. He missed winning the Rhode Island Way Off by 16 pounds. Oh, it was so, so close. Yeah. But a wonderful gentleman from Cumberland won uh, the Rhode Island Way Off uh, with a terrific looking pumpkin, and it's on display at the Big Apple in Rentham. You can go see it. But it really is a fascinating group of people, and you know, they trade their seeds and they don't charge each other for their seeds. Everybody supports each other, everybody shares seeds with each other, and everybody, of course, wants to use a champion seed or cross pollinate two champion seeds so that they can get an extra big pumpkin. So, my son, um, I'll just finish by saying he wants to break the world record so he came close this year um, at with 2294 but the world record is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2615 mm -hmm. or something like that so he's still got another 400 it's an amazing story plus pounds to go you yeah. must be very proud we are very <laughs> proud of him yeah we were so excited for him because this is something he's been doing since he was 10 years old really yeah and um, he actually held the world record for a 16 year old um, with a 1,553 pound pumpkin, I believe it was, when he was 16. What's his goal um, for next year? Another one? So, believe it or not, for the first time in many years, he's going to take a year off. Oh, good. I, th I think Elizabeth thought the pumpkins got too much attention this year. <laughs> she wants to do some traveling yeah, and, good. you know, have it's, some fun. So, I think he's going to take a year off. Do we have that picture of him inside the uh, pumpkin? Is that I available? I think we actually started with that. Yeah, so the picture of him um, inside the pumpkin is really a fun photo because of the fact that there we go. Um, that he and another pumpkin grower had actually traveled together to Pittsburgh to um, place the pumpkin um, at the Pittsburgh Zoo and outside Heinz Field. And so, of course, they had to harvest the seeds because the seeds are very valuable, mm. especially seeds from a pumpkin like this that sure. won the Topps Field way off. So Alex uh, harvested all the seeds, and he's about six feet three inches tall. So he's a big guy, and he got into the pumpkin. <laughs> this, so this looks like it could help <laughs> solve the housing crisis. It's about a thousand dollars in a month rent in downtown Boston right now. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Exactly. But yeah. They, they have a uh, tiny house contest. I or know something. the tiny houses. I love the tiny houses. You, you get into that. You should do a show on tiny houses. That would uh, be fun. I think we we did, but that may not be a bad idea. I just heard a story of a square foot houses. Yeah, that's right, and it's it's less to clean, right? Less to maintain. Yes. I just heard a story in Boston of a couple who retrofitted an old school bus. They right. sold their home. Yeah, what, retrofitted they a school it? bus. They named it something. It had a, what yeah, it, it did have a great name, and they're driving it cross country. They sound fun. You just have to really <laughs> like your partner a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for that's sure. That's right. No, there's there's people that convert these uh, small trucks that you see in the road that uh, U-Haul trucks. They, they those styles. They they convert them into. Uh, Mobile homes mm -hmm. do a beautiful job. Yeah, they really do. Interesting. Yeah. All right, some of the tiny uh, houses are beautiful. Let's spend some time talking about where to go. I want you to tell my audience <laughs> where they should go. Yeah, well, I'll start. Um, so we have so much to do close to home, but every once in a while, it's good to hop over the border and take advantage of what's available next door. So that's why I'm mentioning uh, today New Hampshire. So November 2nd to th uh, November 3rd, just two days, the whole state bands together, and what they call is uh, what they call it is New Hampshire Open Doors. So this is an opportunity for the state to kind of showcase what they're all about. You're going to save some money because everyone kind of uses the opportunity to offer unique deals and sales, specifically for this Open Doors event. So you can mm -hmm. shop tax tax free. Um, you can taste locally sourced food and provisions. Now in New Hampshire, they have some coastal stuff, so you can get some seafood. You can enjoy 
uh, provisions from the mountains uh, and uh, accommodations, bed and breakfasts. Um, artisans from all over the place open up their workshops for you to come and see how they make their crafts. It's almost overwhelming how much is going on, so I'm going to point people to the website nhopendoors.com, and they've got a great tool there where you can plan your itinerary, you can make reservations, you can look at the map and see exactly what's going on and really customize your trip so that way when you go you know exactly where you want to go because if you just head over uh, you might feel overwhelmed because there's so much going on so much mm -hmm. to do and then uh, again in uh, to our north uh, we like to maybe recommend our more active viewers to check out the Bretton Woods Canopy Tour so this is not for the faint of heart um, the Canopy Tour is really a remarkable uh, place and uh, it does run through November 3rd so this is your last chance to, to get in on the action before they close down for the season um, so you're gonna be basically flying among the canopy up there uh, it's a three-hour tour that gets you on zip lines uh, above above the forest canopy so you need to be in reasonable health um, you're gonna do some hiking and there's some long trails that you're gonna have to walk you're gonna be up to 70 feet up in the air and you're gonna travel at speeds up to 30 miles an hour, which wow. is wow. pretty intense. So <laughs> you, if you're the adventurous type and you wanna strap on those hiking boots and, and you know get some bugs in your teeth as you're <laughs> grinning from ear to ear, flying between the trees, check it out. Um, it's a good group uh, thing to do. So if you have a bunch of friends, uh, it's a great way to, to spend some time. So definitely check that out. Hmm. And uh, if you just Google Bretton Woods Canopy Tour, you can find all the information there. Sure. I was just up in Quebec City over the summer and uh, we went to Montmorency Falls, which is a beautiful um, waterfall that actually is, um, it's higher than Niagara Falls. Mm. Um, so it's a pretty uh, substantial waterfall, but anyway, there were a lot of people zip lining across, you know, similar to what Mark was talking about with the Bretton Woods Canopy Tour. It seems to me that the best part of the zip lining is that it seemed like it was over before. <laughs> It started because you come across really fast. I can see why they call it zip lining because sure. you really do zip across, but it was really fun to watch them. Mm -hmm. um, so that looks like a great adventure. So, um, of course, we still have a lot of beautiful foliage out there right now. And in fact, um, many were saying that this is the best foliage season we've had in quite a few years, I guess, because of the combination of all the rain we had in the spring. And, and then we've had a very sunny, uh, warm fall. So the foliage really is still spectacular out there. And uh, one of the nicest and most popular drives, certainly in New England, uh, is the Mohawk Trail. So uh, from here, you would get on the pike, take the pike west to exit two, and pick up Route 7, uh, which heads north all the way uh, into Vermont. And I've done this drive. It's a beautiful drive. Uh, Route 7 is loaded with little restaurants and quaint antique shops and scenic overlooks and beautiful colleges. Middlebury is in the, the Route 7 area of Vermont, for example. So it's really a, a wonderful drive and just a great place to go. And the Mohawk Trail is one of the most uh, uh, celebrated areas for leaf peepers and folks coming in from across the country and uh, across the state to see our beautiful foliage in Massachusetts. The state, um, the state is really pretty when you get out outside of the metropolis. It's uh, uh, narrow roads and, mm -hmm. and just a lot of old stuff along the way and it's it's really nice to see. Mm -hmm. The Mohawk Trail in fact comprises 6,000 acres of mountain ridges, gorges and woods and open from sunrise to sunset. Uh, six log cabins uh, located along the trail um, which are open year round so if you need an overnight place to stay um, you've got one which is terrific. So from one side of Massachusetts to the other, so we also wanted to talk about the Chatham Oktoberfest, uh, which will be Saturday, October 26th. So this is in beautiful uh, Chatham, Mass. Um, and if you haven't been to Chatham, uh, you really, uh, you need to get there because it's a beautiful, beautiful town. One of the prettiest towns on the Cape for sure. It's right at the elbow of the Cape. Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to the beers, bratwurst, cupcake contests, kids games, pumpkin people in the park on Saturday, October 26th, you can also, because the weather is supposed to be good on Saturday, uh, you can walk on the beach. Uh, the Chatham Lighthouse is absolutely beautiful. You can see the lighthouse. You can go to the fish pier in Chatham. 
bottom, which I did this summer, and you can see the seals coming in when the fishing boats come in, and it's really fun uh, really to go there and the watch the. <laughs> we were looking for the great whites, and actually, um, if you walk uh, around the beaches in Chatham, which is a wonderful, fun thing to do, there are big signs everywhere of great whites with huge uh, teeth, teeth yeah. uh, warning shark. people, shark yeah, teeth. about the sharks, yeah. So um, those are fun to see too. And there's a shark app that you can, you know, put on your phone, and you know, you can track all of the shark sightings and that type of thing. So. Uh, Chatham, well known, unfortunately, not only for the Oktoberfest and the beautiful beaches and the lighthouse, but also for sharks. There's also uh, a terrific uh, place there called the Chatham Bars Inn that is open year round and uh, it's just a wonderful resort and you can, it's right on the, um, the bay there and you can uh, sit out on the uh, lawn and enjoy a, a beverage or, you know, whatever you want to do and it's just a beautiful, beautiful historic place, so a fun place to visit. And now Mark's going to move over to the other side of the state and yeah. tell us about the Essex Clam Fest. So do you like uh, clam chowder, Roy? I love clam chowder. Well, then you <laughs> might want to check this. Especially when they put clams in it. Yeah, well, that's sort of uh, key, right? I, I tell them to dig deep. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you got to dig deep for that clam. And uh, October 26th at Shepherd Memorial Park is the Essex, Essex, pardon me, Essex Clam Fest. So the highlight, of course, is the tasting competition. Um, but there's a lot more to do there. Um, you can, you know, get your fill of chowder. There's a lot of more uh, seafood and other types of food if you're not quite the seafood loving or chowder loving mm -hmm. friend. So if you have a partner, or you're going on a date, and your your fellow companion is not a big fan, don't worry. There's going to be something for them. Uh, it's free admission. If you want to take part in the tasting competition, though, however, it is ten bucks, which ain't bad for all you can eat chowder. Sure. So bring your appetite. <laughs> You know, and what's interesting is that you can also, this is interesting, but you can get your flu shot while you're there. And also, um, it's a drug take back day. So I know that doesn't really seem to jive all the time, but it's one of those community events where people know that a lot of people are coming to the area to celebrate. So let's give them other things to do. Let's tack on a few other things. So, you know, sometimes it's tough to find time to go out and get our flu shot. So while you're there, why not? Um, but I definitely would recommend checking it out if you're a fan of chowder. Mm -hmm. um, and then another food-oriented thing that you may want to check out is the Castleberry Fall Craft Festival, Fall Craft Festival in Wilmington, and that's October 26th and 27th. So you've got two days to make it to the Shriners Auditorium over there. <laughs> So 175, more than 175 of the region's best artisans will be on hand to display their arts and crafts. There's a lot of locally uh, produced food, floral arrangements, toys, engravings, pottery, um, handmade personal care products like soaps and candles and lotions, leather, photography, clothing, you name it. So it's the kind of place you go when you want to get that unique gift, the kind of thing that you're not going to find at the big box store, something personal, something unique, something with a story behind it. You may find out that the artisan will tell you some information about how they made that item, what inspired them. So when you give that gift, there's a little something extra. Hmm. And you're supporting a local artist or a local business. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, something unique. That's always a nice gift during the holidays. I can't even believe we're talking about the holidays. I know. So uh, another great place to visit, and this is one of my favorite parts of Massachusetts, Franklin County Cider Days. Uh, so uh, we're talking about an event that runs from November 1st through the 3rd. Uh, we see the apples there, uh, also on sale along with the cider. And uh, this is an event that's celebrating its 25th year this year, and you can take part in orchard tours. Uh, you see here hay rides, there's music, dancing, uh, cider making, uh, uh, apple cuisine, and much, much more. Uh, there's an amateur cider competition, a hard cider tasting, a cider making workshop, and an apple pancake breakfast. That sounds fantastic. Mm. And there are also art exhibits, workshop, contests, and more. And there you see some cupcakes too, which are always a great addition. And there's the cider, of course, which is what they're celebrating at Cider Day. So this is a, a three-day event. And again, you see more of the cider making process. Hot mulled cider as well if it's a cold day uh, on November 1st or November 2nd. So again, this is just a wonderful time of year to celebrate New England 
Maryland to celebrate the cider making process and uh, you know to really uh, join in the fun of what uh, being a New Englander is all about. So as you can see they draw a good crowd um, and uh, one of the great things about being in Franklin County is that not only uh, can you enjoy this particular event, but you can visit historic Deerfield, which is nearby. Uh, lots of incredible historic homes in historic Deerfield, uh, dating from the 1600s, so always really an amazing place to visit. Um, the Deerfield Inn is there, a great place to uh, have dinner. And then, of course, Shelburne Falls also in Franklin County is a terrific spot, and the famous Bridge of Flowers in Shelburne is really a great sight to see. So lots of fun things to do in Franklin County in addition to the Cider Days. And um, another really fun spot in Massachusetts, and we're talking about Central Mass now, is the Fall Food Truck Festival in Princeton, Mass. And Princeton is a beautiful town, so Wachusett Mountain is there. So if you're hankering to go skiing and you just can't wait to get to Wachusett, uh, you can go to the Fall Truck, Fall Food Truck Festival and get an early preview. So this is uh, the weekend of November 2nd and 3rd. And uh, we're talking about an array of food specialties from assorted food trucks. Who doesn't love a food truck, right? Including craft beers, which a lot of people also love. You can enjoy live music and uh, you can digest your dinner with a sky ride to the mountain summit. Plenty of fun for the whole family. Mm -hmm. So uh, the sky ride sounds fun. And again, the Wachusett Inn is there, which is a beautiful inn. So it's just a great part of Massachusetts to visit. It was visit. just a uh, food truck at the wedding in uh, Newport this week. Really? Yeah. Did you was, go to the wedding? No, I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at, at Jennifer Lawrence's yeah, wedding. That's yes. right. And I saw the guy was from Boston. Yeah. And he got a last minute call to he come down. And make hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, he was making bacon cheeseburgers and all sorts of stuff. And he said big the Hollywood hit. folks big can hit. really eat. Yeah. yeah, and they love their french fries. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry yeah, to interrupt you. Yeah, no, that's you. so cool. I hope it's great for his business, too. Yeah. I hope his business got a boost from this. I'm sure it did. Yeah, that's terrific. And Mark, speaking of Boston, Mark's yeah. going to tell us about uh, some comedy events coming up sure. in the city. So a lot of the events this time of year are, are outside, and, you know, maybe sometimes you just want to be inside and have a good laugh, right? Well, the Boston Comedy Arts Festival is coming up November 12th uh, to 16th. Five days, eight venues, 32 shows, more than 75 comedians. Uh, this year they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. So the founders, Jim and Helen McClure, you know, they started it kind of on a shoestring and it's really grown. So now um, all over the city are events uh, as part of the festival. So you're going to see big names like Caroline Ray, Emo Phillips, Robert Klein. You know, what's more exciting to me is the amateur competition. So you're going to have people who are trying to make a break into the business, mm -hmm. make a name for themselves. So definitely check that out. Go to bostoncomedyfest.com and find the venues. Get your tickets now because a lot of them sell out fast. Absolutely. We um, have um, probably very little time left, but uh, can we switch to the uh, Berkshires? Sure. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I just want to put in a, a plug for my friends at Plymouth Plantation because sure. this is a fabulous time of year to go to Plymouth. I mean, it's really, um, you know, the time of year where we celebrate, obviously, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, you can enjoy one of their authentic pilgrim uh, meals there, and they have weekly harvest feasts through the month of November. So it's uh, period authentic music and song with a 17th century meal, including wood press cider, herbs, mussels, beer, turkey, a potage of cabbage, which sounds yummy, doesn't it? Leeks mm. and onions and sweet pudding. Yeah, so you've got a good have a dessert rock there. Yes, they do. They have a rock. Although I remember the first time I saw it, I always thought it was going to be bigger and mm -hmm. sort of looming over the thing. landscape. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah, overwhelming, but. it's not. That's right. Um, and then in the Berkshires, um, so many great things to do at this time of year. So if you haven't been to the Norman Rockwell Museum, uh, really you owe it to yourself to go. There's a fall foliage train ride on the Berkshire Scenic Railway. Uh, the region is just full of activities. The Hancock Shaker Village in Pittsfield, which has food-based workshops, where you can take a guided hike 
of the Hoosac Range Trail at Wigwam Western Summit. The Berkshire Theater Group is putting on a, a fun, whimsical musical based on Roald Dahl's Willy Wonka. I know we've got a lot of Willy Wonka fans out there. And Tanglewood has a full calendar of events. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the incredible Nomkey Pumpkin Show at Nomkey House and Gardens in Stockbridge. And if you haven't walked down the main street in Stockbridge, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, really a wonderful main street. There's the Red Lion in there and just so many uh, fun places to visit in the Stockbridge area and the Norman Rockwell Museum, really an unforgettable place. Right. Can we take a look at the Edithville Railroad uh, video? Sure. So um, one of the other fun things to do is to uh, get ready for the Festival of Lights at Edaville, and so here comes Santa Claus. <laughs> we just saw him. And so here's the Festival of Lights, which is really terrific. And again, you know, Edaville, we just uh, talked about some of the Halloween activities at Edaville um, in a recent show. And so now we're getting a little preview of Christmas. So as soon as we cruise through Halloween, we're gonna be starting with the Festival of Lights at Edaville. And so it starts in mid-November and runs to the beginning of the new year. Uh, more than 17 million lights illuminate the park while your family enjoys Edaville, Thomas Land, of course, and the Festival of Lights. So always a great train ride. And if your kids are fans of Thomas the Tank Engine, I don't know if your girls oh, are yeah. Mark or not. They went but their Thomas phase. That's right. And they give so. Edaville a real thumbs up. They do a great job over there. They do. They, yeah, always they really do. All right, Mary and Mark, thank you both again for coming in and telling us where to go. Thank you. Happy yeah. travels. Yeah, happy travel to you, too. And <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Mike Hammond for all his hard work in putting today's uh, video uh, uh, material together. Uh, Jeff Pickett, Dave Young, C.J. Mullen, Frank Walsh, Gina Coe, Ellen Penniman, Leo McGowan. We hope your uh, recovery is going well. And uh, I suppose that's it. Uh, oh, yes, Maxie's. Don't forget about Maxie's. <laughs> Great deli from him uh, for the show and for the guests. And uh, that's about it. We hope you enjoyed the show and watch again. This happy is Roy Halloween Cohen. and happy, happy Halloween. Thanksgiving. Happy <laughs> holidays, happy everything. That's Buckle right. Up. Thanks for watching.